Psalms 91, uh, verse 1 and 2 is what I want to put my eyes on. I'm going to pick it up from the New King James reading. Just change a little bit of the thou's and these out of the context, but it's close to King James. Um, I'm interested in verse 1, um, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But let's read it, verse 1 and 2, or you can listen to my as I go along. Um, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, my God. <laughs> in him will I trust, in him will I trust. Um, the message is a fresh experience with God. Put that in the atmosphere, a fresh experience with God. A fresh experience with God. A fresh experience with God, experience in itself, is something that is personal, as a personal encounter. You have an experience. It's an undergoing. Living through, it is a direct observation of the practical doings and goings of events based on knowledge. Mama used to say, you got to know him for yourself. And as you walk with the Lord, there will come a day and a time you will have an experience that's unforgettable. That you will know the Lord for yourself. I can say that all that I have, I've got it from God. My encounter with the God from old to young, through every failure and success, loss or gain, tears of joy, I have experienced. The reason you're here and online and sitting today in this atmosphere because you've had an experience with God and you live to tell the story. But today, we thank the Lord for the secret of this text. I call it 911. If you don't get nothing else, if you ever get in trouble, Come to this text, because it will be your 9 In this 911, we have a dwelling place, and it is under the shadow of the Almighty. Shaddai, the Almighty God. The powerful Shaddai. He is the Almighty God. He is ever-present, and he's in our lives. And note the text. He that dwelleth, it's personal, but yes, it's inclusive, not just the ministers, deacons, and elders, and ushers, and those that are operating within the church. He that dwells includes you and I. Moses is the writer of these Psalms 90 and 91, and it's beautiful to go back and read those in your spare time. It is in 91, we see that here that Moses begins out through a wilderness experience. And this is the second portion of his 40-year journey. 40 is the time of testing and proving. My dad told us, he said, if you don't get it straightened out by 40, you're going to miss it. Because 40 is the number that determines what you're going to do with your life. Now, some are late bloomers, but 40 is the barometer. Moses spent some time in Pharaoh's house, and then he spent 40 years on the backside of the desert. God tested and proved them. Then he had to lead God's people, and that was the real test. 40 years in the desert before he came to the land of promise. God had delivered Israel out of bondage. He had taken them from the desert to the, through the desert for 40 years before they entered into the promise. The text says in Psalms 90 and 10, the days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for in it soon, it is in it you're soon cut off and you fly away. This is not a funeral, hang on. So by this point, Moses is 40 years plus again, well over 80. So he's not a spring chicken walking through the wilderness. He has to have strength, and that strength must come from the Lord. From the time of his life that he left home. He had been on this journey because he had to run out of Pharaoh's house. The journey picks us up in Deuteronomy 2, 14 and 15. 
and the space or the time in which we came from Kadesh Baran until we came over the brook Zeran. These 38 years until all the generation of the men of war were wasted or consumed. Out from among the hosts as the Lord swore unto them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from among the hosts until they were consumed. A fresh experience with God. Kedesh Baran is the beginning of the journey. 11 day journey turned into 40 years because they were walking with the wrong people. Everyone cannot participate in your promise. They cannot be a part of your promise. Put your hand on yourself and say, this is my promise. So I can't share it with everybody. Because it's going to take longer for me to get it because God's not going to send it till I walk some folk out my life. I'm just reading the text. They could not go with him into the promise. 40 years only could have taken 11 days. How sad it is to have people hanging on to you, hanging around you, don't want you to get better, do better, or have better, and they are holding up the progress. A fresh experience with God is a wilderness. The time when God begins to walk things out of your life. Second year, 40 years, finally it came to the place where God was going to show his hand. They could not go in, but they did see the land. Some of you remember the 12 spies that went up and looked over and saw. Said there were grasshoppers in the land, so they knew it was there. Ten of them said, we can't go up. Two said, we're well able, and that was Joshua and Caleb. The first experience is that who's walking with you? towards your destiny who then needs to get off of your route that you're going on because of the outcry and the fearless faithlessness of the people 40 years they spent in the wilderness the text says they were wandering in the wilderness going from place to place just up and down so the writer in the text here in Psalms 91 helps us to know that it's an encouraging word to see that God is still there he is a refuge and a strength and a present help in the time of trouble. God in all ages, the God of all ages, the God of all providence, the God of all earthly pilgrimage, he's there with you and giving you a fresh experience. Finally, Deuteronomy 2 and 2, the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, you have come past this mountain long enough. Turn and go north. North, as we know, is up. South is down. A fresh experience with God. When he go around in circles, when he fly high like a bird up in the sky, round and round and round we go, nobody knows where you're going to land. But now it's time to go up into your promise. Hang with me. In Deuteronomy 2 and 5, he says, but don't meddle with Esau or Seir. And I want you to pay for everything you get along the way. Rich in a wilderness. Got silver to handle my own way. A fresh experience with God. You have resources you have not tapped into yet. But don't meddle with Esau, our seer. And matter of fact, in verse 9 of Deuteronomy 2, don't distress Moab, Lot's children. Leave them alone. So Lord, why am I reading this? Because sometimes, Clinton, you may see somebody that looks like they got theirs before you got yours. And what they have is not going to be as big as yours. Your experience is going to teach you how to appreciate all that you got. Because the longer you takes to get there, the bigger it's going to get. Just encourage yourself and say, God's working on my stuff. He's, he's getting my stuff fixed up. I just don't want any woman... I just don't want any man. I want the right one. So if it takes a little longer for me to be a little single, then I'll just wait because I don't want no cuckoo. Took too long to get my life together. Now I got to live with a broke. Anyway, God says, I have to wait for it. 
don't meddle with them. Don't be distressed. Leave Lot's children alone and go on about your life and move forward. So the time came that they passed this mountain long enough. They've been going around and around and around. I have learned a little math that I did take up that I did not want to get saved in a 360 degree. Because when I came to Jesus, I was jacked up. So to go 360 degrees, I'm back to the same jacked up person. But I learned to move to split it of 360 to 180. So when I turn this time, I'm going, oh good, the sun looks good. I'm going in the right direction. Some of you have been in the church, but you did a 380, a 360, I'm sorry. But you need to do a 180. And make sure when you leave this time, you start walking in the path towards your blessing. Walking towards your blessing is not going northward, it's going upward. So Psalms 91, dwelling in the secret place. A fresh experience with God that had a 180 turnaround. My life is going in a new direction. It took a wilderness to get me turned around. It took some lean days to get me turned around. It took some broke times to get me turned around. It took some sad days to get me finally turned around. Now I'm walking in the right direction. See, the staleness of your experience with God is because you don't allow your life to realize where you came from. Your thankfulness should not be because of what you did, but because of what he's done. You couldn't have made it out the wilderness with all that silver and all that gold. You couldn't have made it out of that wilderness. Let me help you out. You couldn't have survived that trial if God didn't show you the way out. Give God just a short praise. I'm almost done. But thanking him for getting me, y'all patty caking. Tell your neighbor, I remember the wilderness. I remember it like it was yesterday. Dwelling in the secret place is setting down. Dwelling is to set down, is to remain, is to dwell there, is to settle down, is to homestead. It is a place of resting, dwelling, not allowing the claim jumpers to come in and move you off of what God said. I'm setting myself down in this promise. It's the secret place. It's a covenant place. I'm hiding under the shadow of El Shaddai of the almighty i'm experiencing things with god of the most high i'm under his wings of protection because he's the almighty safety one i asked god how can a shadow protect me he said clinton it ain't the shadow it's him that's throwing the shadow if you got a big god throwing the shadow hey god i think i got a revelation if the shadow can keep you safe what about the real god showing up under your life Whose shadow are you under this morning? The Lord said in Deuteronomy 2 and 7, the Lord your God has blessed you. Deuteronomy 2 and 7, don't miss this, I'm almost done. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hand. He knows you're walking or treading through this great wilderness. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you and you have lacked nothing give god a lack nothing praise before i quit you have lacked nothing people have died going off the scene people still can't find their way back home but look at you closet full of clothes shoes you ain't worn yet still got a right mind in your spirit oh you ain't helping me go there tell your neighbor you got it all what you complaining about you have lacked nothing this wilderness God says, I'm going to bless you in this wilderness. You will lack nothing. Provisions will be in this wilderness. Jehovah Jireh will be there. Increase will be in this wilderness. Rich with silver in the wilderness. And I'll protect you. Watch this. This is my main point. One of them. I'm going to protect you from the blind spots. Blind spots. Blind spots. Blind spots. I need to show you this quickly. Kim, run up here. Run up here. Run up here. Corby, come quickly. Blind spot. The Lord told me this this morning. He said, come on, come on. Three of you guys. Three. I'm going to protect you from the blind spot. Just, I'm sorry, Corey. Just, just two. Just two. I'm going to protect you from the blind spots. Blind spots. Stand here. 
Kim, stand there. Right here. So look that way. Boom. Blind spots. Get on this side of him. Blind spots. Get around this side of him. Uh, no, don't look at the TV. But can you see us looking straight ahead? Can you see us? Can you see him? Step a little further. Further. No, you. Him. Step a little further. Right there. Can you see us now? Can you see us, Kim? Yes. Back up. John. Can you see us now? No. Step forward, John. Right there. Can you see us now? Yes. John goes a little bit back. Right there. Can you see us now? John, go forward just a little bit. Just for, right there. Can you see us now? Yes. You can see us? Yes. The Lord says, I'm going to protect you from the blind spots. The enemy knows if I'm this far in front of you, you can see me. Yes. Back up, John. Can you see us now? No. The Lord says, but I got you from the blind spots because I'm going to show you a fresh experience you never experienced before. Step forward, John. You've been seeing me in front of you and you're being comfortable but now I'm slowly backing up where you can't see me but I'm still protecting you because you're under the shadow of the Almighty don't worry about the blind spots that's where the devil tries to slip in but tell your neighbor God's got you even in the blind spots God's got you when you can't see your way out God's got you I don't know what the next move to make but God's got me from the blind spots my fresh experience with God is when I can't see his protection I know for myself he's always there he is my refuge he is my fortress he is my God in him will I trust my refuge is a hiding place my fortress it's a place of protection. My true help and faithful God. I will trust in him because he's my security. A fresh experience with God. When I don't know what to do, I run under the shadow of the Almighty. I sat down and dwell in his presence. He promised to protect me from sickness from heartaches, from setbacks, and from the blind spots. He's always been faithful. None like him nowhere. He is my God. He is my refuge. He is my strength. Give God a shout. Come on, rest on your feet. I'm done for this. Hold your hands up. A fresh experience with God. Say it again. A fresh experience with God begins with the wilderness, but ends with the promise. Encourage one person to tell them, God knows what you're walking through, even in this wilderness. But you, come on, keep preaching. Tell them, but you have lacked nothing. You have lacked nothing. If you're in this room, and I believe this is a short but pointed message to the wilderness walkers. And we're all in different places at different times of wilderness. You're looking at others that are progressing and advancing in their own personal lives. But the text bears out that Esau, Seir, had to fight for every inch of their land. The Moabites, the children of Lot, had to fight for every inch of their land. And there were giants they were fighting. But you, I just told you, turn and go up. I'm going before you. And the land that I'm going to give you is flowing with milk and honey. It's going to be an abundance of all that you need. Because I, he is El Shaddai. If you're in this quick room quickly, online, put in the chat, pray for me. Just hold your hand up and say, Pastor Charles, could you pray for me today? My wilderness looks dark. I don't see the end of this. 
it should have been over 11 days ago, but I'm still walking. And I'm wondering where will I get to the end? This message is bringing you to a suspense date, a closure of this trial, an end of this struggle. God's word has to be faithful and true. And God had to walk them until they got certain things out of their lives. And when those others that were hanging on fell off, God brought them into the promise. Head spout, Father, hands are raised in this house and hearts are open. We need an experience that we have not tapped into yet. Let the fire burn again. Let the joy come back. Let church not become so boring to me. Let me put something in to get something out. Let me remember the wilderness of last and the joy that I'm walking in today. Let me know, God, that you've been with me the whole journey. This is only a passing moment, and I thank you for it. When I come into the land, the first thing I'm going to do is march around Jericho. I'm going to march and walk till the walls fall down. I've never seen an experience like this before. All this wilderness that made me stronger, and all you want me to do is come in here and walk around the walls seven times and watch them fall? Oh, but I got to put a shout on it. My shout will bring a praise, and the praise will bring the walls down. One more time, could you open your mouth and just shout hallelujah? Come on, some of y'all ain't doing it. Open your mouth and shout hallelujah. Go ahead, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. There you go.